Hello and welcome to another Blender know-how tutorial and in this video we're going to actually take a little bit more of a dive into the deep end uh, with some functions. Uh, it will be a little bit complicated to wrap your mind around but I hope to be able to teach it in a simple manner that it won't be and that is recursion. Uh, it's a little bit of a big task but I think and it's, honestly I think it's because it, a lot of times we think of it as just something really hard and honestly it, it shouldn't be, it's not. Ultimately in the past we've done things like for loops. This for loop can be represented uh, similarly to this in uh, as a recursion function. So if you haven't already go ahead into Blender uh, and start a new file and take a second, you can pause this video, take a second and copy this down for just a quick uh, tutorial. This will be useful to know how to do the recursion in just a second. Okay, so now that you have that copied down, we're going to define a function and let's just call this the recursion, recursive function or recursive func and let's make it a function like that. Okay, now make sure we have our indentation correct. There are a couple rules that you should know in recursion. Or I guess I should explain a little bit more of what recursion is. Recursion is something that happens more, it's a function that calls itself. Essentially that's what it is. So for instance in this for loop it's it's practically recursive. What's happening is you have something that calls itself. So it like goes in here, it says I, I, we're gonna set it equal to zero the first time. It goes through here. Okay, zero is still less than twenty. Call it again. Go back up. Okay, I now it's one. It's still less than twenty. Two, less than twenty, all the way up to twenty, and then it says, okay, the condition has been met, and now we will go on with the rest of our program. Okay, that, that I hope that made a little bit of sense of what was going on. That's that's what's happening with the for loop. Let's create this for loop in a function as recursion. So now, if we want to do this, let's just make an if statement. If i is less than, is greater than 20, then we are going to return. This is the most important part of a recursion, recursive function. And honestly, just for organization and simplicity purposes, always place it at the top of the function. Sometimes if, when you place it at the bottom, it, it can make things go haywire. What we've done is this is this is what in a lot of ter in a lot of places called their base case. When when do we want our recursive function to end? When i is greater than 20 or equal to actually. If we wanted to make it exactly like this. If i is equal to 20 or greater than then exit the recursive function. That's what we've just said. And that's exactly what we want. Now we can go in here and we can say bpy.ops.mesh.primitive uh, cube add bpy.ops.transform.translate value. We could even just copy and paste that, honestly. Uh, I guess I was just stupid and didn't do that. So do i times 2. Uh, also, if I didn't, I'm not sure if I actually did explain this. This was just to create this, just to show you what was happening here. Um, so I'm now going to delete this because we have it down in here. And technically, this should be the same thing as this. So let's go ahead and actually, yeah, let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, let's finish our recurs recursive function as there are a couple things that we still need to do. Uh, first off, we have an i here, and it has never, I mean, we don't know what it begins with. So above, um, actually, let's go down here. In, in Python, we have to call functions after we define them. So let's call the recursive function right here. Uh, let's just put 0 right here. And if you haven't seen some of my other videos on passing parameters, 
we can just put in here i. So we're going to pass 0, and that will be stored in the variable i just within this function. And i, uh, so 0 will be i right here. So 0 is definitely not greater than 20. So it's not going to pass this, and it's going to continue on. Next off, all we need to do is recall the recursive function. And we're just going to pass the parameter i back into it. So now, let's say it was 0. 0 is going to be passed back in. It's always going to be 0. So just like in a for loop, especially if you know other languages like C++ or Java, often your for loop will look something like this. For int i is equal to 0. And it will look like i is less than a value of, I guess it would be 20 in this situation, and it'd be i plus plus. So this is what we need to do in here, because we're never actually making i get bigger. So all we have to do is uh, i, and just to make it a little bit easier to read in your mind, if you don't know like a lot of terminology within languages, i, if you make it equal to i plus 1, uh, oops, then it will it will just take i, whatever the value is. So the first time it will be 0. So 0 will be stored as i. 0 is less than 20. It will add a cube, and it will translate it as many i as it is. So 0 times 2, so it's still going to be at 0. 0 plus 1 is now going to be 1. So now i is 1. Pass 1 into i. 1 is less than 20 and it's going to keep going until it's going to be 19 plus 1 is 20 and then 20 will go in here 20 20 is equal to 20 return and then we'll get back out here and continue on in the in your uh, main so let's get rid of this for loop that I was using for explaining and I'm also going to put this down here just for organization Oops. So we're just going to call the de select, delete, and our for loop recursion function. This should create the exact same thing if we run it. You didn't notice anything because it actually did. Let's move one. I didn't think that through all the way. Let's move one of those cubes so you can see that it, it actually did something. It deleted that cube, deleted all the cubes actually, and it did the exact same thing as the for loop. Uh, so now, yeah, this. That, that is how you do recursive functions. And there is a lot of power within doing them because you can call not only this function, but other functions as well. So I hope this makes a little bit of sense. Uh, spend some time with it. It, it is definitely a concept that is uh, taught in colleges for an extensive period of time. It's taught a lot because people sometimes don't understand it. and I hope that this has made it easy to understand and that you can be able to wrap your head around recursion as it, it really can be something very useful and uh, powerful so I hope this helps and thanks for watching